Now let's go explore these uh, panel options a little bit more. I'm going to open up the geometry menu here and open up the edge loop menu. And let's go ahead and isolate. We're going to hold down control shift and isolate this little seat area. Then hold down control shift again and we're going to do slice curve. And I'm just going to slice this seat up a bit. So with this, just this one visible, it's going to make all these separate uh, sections here. And while this is visible, I can go ahead and just do a panel loops uh, just with that visible. And it's only going to create panel loops for what was visible. If I had done, just go ahead and show you, if I had shown everything and then done panel loops, it's going to do panel loops for everything uh, not, not masked out or visible here. So I don't want that. I just want all the things that were in our seat here. So we'll go ahead and hide that. So just with this visible, we're going to do panel loops. Now I have double turned on. So when I hit panel loops, every single one of these, again, if I hold down control shift and control shift A, every single one of these is double sided and has a bevel. Um, one other option, oops, let's go uh, control shift and we'll go ahead and slice this again. One other option you can do is turn off double and then when we hit panel loops, it's going to look the same. However, if I hold down control shift and select that and then control shift A, it's going to select this whole thing because it's all one object. So if I hold down shift and smooth, these aren't separate uh, panels anymore. It's all just one. So you can use that to your advantage. If you go over here, let's bring everything back. And everything else is masked out, so if I go over here to my deformation menu and just do, do a polish, you can actually polish that down and get kind of a, a seat looking texture and it's all combined into one object so you don't have to worry about a bunch of different um, polygroups here. Or they're, they're different polygroups but it's all one object, so if I hold uh, Control shift a it's all one big seat object and you can continue to smooth these out and they won't go into separate panels, they'll actually just go into one. So definitely use that to your advantage. And let's go ahead and hit Control Shift, tap to bring everything back. Let's turn the floor off. And let's go ahead and start adding some more panels. So we're going to take this panel up here and hold down Control Shift and just select that. So all this, this is the only poly group that's visible on this actual panel. So I hit Control Shift A. This is the entire panel. I just want to show this outer piece. So what we're going to do is make an extra panel on top of this. So I'm going to go up here to my panel loops options. And if we turn on double and hit panel, what it's going to do is it's going to give me a double sided panel but unfortunately if I hit control shift and isolate that and then control shift A we have a double sided panel that popped off but if I invert that it left a big hole behind so let's go ahead and undo all that so now we're back to uh, just this isolated panel here if I turn on append and then hit panel loops what that's going to do is actually append a brand new double sided panel on top of that uh, the previous one and everything's already masked out, so if I go into move mode and move that down, you can see I have a brand new panel right on top of that. So you can very quickly build up layers of detail just by going through here, isolating this panel. Now you're going to see these have the same polygroup. All I need to do is go down here to polygroups and auto groups, and anything that's not vert welded, polygroups, auto groups, anything that's not vert welded is going to make it its own polygroup. So now we can isolate this one go up here to our geometry tab and then panel loops again and append so you can keep appending more and more new polygroups here as you go now remember as you're working I'm going to um, isolate these areas right here control shift A so I've got these panels isolated uh, remember as you're working and making these new panels you can always go to deformation and we'll do a polish by features with the open circle and you can keep polishing these as you go to make sure you keep those nice polished lines um, on those isolated panels um, the next thing I want to talk about is framing a uh, mesh. So the first thing we're going to do, let's say we want to put a rubber gasket around all these open borders right here. So one way to isolate these top panels is a slow way, which is control shift click, invert, control shift click, control shift click, and you can go through and isolate all these top panels like that. Um, a better way to do that is to utilize those inner poly groups. So I'm going to control shift click to isolate that panel, control shift drag to invert that, and these now we have these blue poly groups all on the inside. So I'm going to grab those poly groups, invert, and then get rid of that top one. So now we've isolated these inner poly groups. Now if you want to, you can go to poly groups and then do auto groups and that'll isolate those out in their own poly groups. But we're actually going to use this inner poly group to our advantage. How I'm going to do that is, if you'll remember under geometry, edge loop, or um, panel loops, and we had the loops options selected, that gave us five edge rings on each bevel. So I know if I go have these inner poly groups selected, go over down here to visibility 
and hit grow one, two, three, four, five times, I now have all of the inner panels and all of the bevel geometry edge loops or edge rings. So now if I invert this, I've got all the top panels selected. So what I'm going to do is frame all these open mesh borders. And what I mean by that, let me show you. I'm going to get rid of this brush menu and I'm going to dock the stroke menu over here. Now let's talk about uh, curve brushes just really quickly to kind of refresh ourselves. I'm going to go to B, C, and then grab Curve Multi-Tube. And I'm going to drag that out. And remember, curve brushes are brushes that have geometry attached to them that kind of update on the fly. And you can grab these and update the curve. You can make them longer, keep updating these curves. And it's got this curve attached to this mesh. And since this is a curve multi-tube, I can actually drag out multiple, and then these are all editable uh, on their own. Uh, let's go ahead and undo all that. So that's Curve Basics. And what we're trying to do is get this curve applied to all these open borders. And there's a really cool function over here under our Curve. So here's, a, here's Curve, where Curve Mode is turned on for this brush. Here's Curve Functions. And under Curve Functions, you have a frame mesh. By default, all of these options are turned on. So we've got Border, Polygroups, Increased Edges. If I, have, if I hit Frame Mesh now, it's going to give me a curve over all of those options, which is not exactly what I want. Um, I don't have any creased edges, so that one really doesn't matter. With Polygroups turned on, every single polygroup that's visible gets a framed border mesh, which is kind of what I don't want in this seat in particular. I just want to frame these open borders. So what I'm going to do is turn off Polygroups, and then just with Border selected, hit Frame Mesh. And now I have a frame around all of that mesh. I'm going to go ahead and turn off X Symmetry and then hit frame mesh and then while I'm uh, updating these with tubes it's not going to get any overlap. So I've framed my mesh I'm going to make my brush size a you know a certain size and with curve multi tube selected I'm going to click one of these curves and it's going to update that frame that curve along the borders with a mesh. Um, this is a little bit thick so I'm going to make my brush size smaller and then tap again and now I've got a curved tube wrapped around my entire object. Now the cool thing about this is I don't have to stick with this curved tube. It's like, okay, the curved tube is cool. I want something with a little bit more detail. I can go into brush. Uh, let's do I for insert. And now let's use this insert cylinder that has those ridges on it. I'm going to select that. And because it has curve mode turned on for it, I can tap it and that'll update that on the fly. So now I have that curve, that um, the curved tube with the details on it wrapped around and it updates on the fly. And again, you can make this brush size bigger and tap it and update it or smaller, tap and update it. Another cool thing you can do is you can go ahead and isolate this geometry out. So let's say we like this geometry. So I'm going to tap on my mesh to um, go ahead and get rid of my curves here. And with this stuff masked out, I can go hide point and that's going to hide my curves, go under sub tool, split hidden. And now I have, let's go ahead and uh, just turn on visibility. So here's my um, vehicle mesh and now on as a separate subtool I have my curve mesh so I can play with those separately as separate subtools or if I don't want that I can go ahead and just go down here and delete it so now we're back up here to just my um, spaceship mesh and let's do another example uh, along these same kind of lines I'm going to hit, hit control shift and isolate this top panel right here and I want to put rivets around this panel right here. So what I'm going to do is go to uh, Brush. I'm going to do I for Insert, Multi-Mesh, and then I'm going to grab Industrial Parts. And because it's an Insert Multi-Mesh, if I hit M, uh, I can choose any of these meshes that are assigned to, that are included in this brush. So I'm going to choose Flathead here. And the first thing we need to do is add a frame border around this. And I can't do that because it's not a curve brush. It's an insert multi-mesh brush, which means when you click and drag, it's going to insert that mesh. Uh, it's easy enough to turn it into a curve brush. All I have to do is go up here to Curve and turn on Curve Mode. And now it's Curve Brush. Um, so with that brush selected, I can hit this frame mesh around the border and then update this. So I'm going to select that. And it's going to insert around that curve all of these um, flatheads. Um, what I want to do is increase this curve step. So what I'm going to do is do this curve step and we'll say like three and then tap the mesh. And that'll give us rivets around that edge. Now the problem is the rivets need to be inset on this edge a little bit. So I can undo that. And with just this showing, I'm going to go over here to visibility. And we're going to shrink this visibility a couple times. So now when I frame this, let's go ahead and hit frame mesh and then update that with the rivets. It's going to put those rivets along the inside here. So let's go ahead and say we like that. I'm going to tap off. And now we have rivets placed all around the object on the inside. And just like the other one, if I want to, I can hide point, go to subtool, go to split hidden, 
And now I have these, let's turn everything on, now I have these rivets as a sub subtool that I can alt, alt click and select and have those uh, available to me to go ahead and you know, color or move around or whatever I want to do. Now if I do want to move those around, remember I can go into Move Brush and we'll go ahead and dock our brush menu over here and we're going to go to Auto Masking and with Topological on, the first one you click, you can just click and move around. You don't have to worry about moving all these around. And of course you can turn on X Symmetry if you want, but so you can move those all really quickly to kind of place them a little bit more, a little better if you need to.